Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm glad the old man is dead. How about you? Well, me and Rick's glad about it anyway. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, I wrote a song that kind of talks about the Lord coming. And uh, let me do it for you right now. <laughs> God bless you so much. You've been walking the same old road mile after mile. You've been listening to the same old voice tell the same old lie. You've been trying to feel the same old hole inside. There's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Can you say amen? If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If 
you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you believe that, say amen. I said if you believe that, say amen. Well, are you ready for some word? Well, that's not very exciting. I said, are you ready for some word? I'm going to preach it whether you're ready for it or not. God called me to preach, and I'm going to preach. I wonder if we could get one of those music stands down here, Rick, and I'm going to get down where people are. If you're not going to come to me, I'll come to you. Is that all right? Praise God. Uh, we got a brand new CD. It hadn't been out uh, just, a, uh, just a few months. And uh, you've got to know the kind of crowd that I reach to appreciate the title of this CD. It's called uh, Church Pews and Bar Stools. And I reach a lot of good old boys whose wife buys my CDs and puts them in their pickup truck, and they listen to me not knowing I'm gospel until the message gets a hold of them. And the first three singles off of this uh, new CD, I have one on the flag that went to number one, and then I have one... Uh, uh, called Learning to Dance in the Rain went number one, and then I recorded uh, uh, a friend of mine wrote uh, The Old Man is Dead, and I rearranged it and wrote a bridge for it and recorded it. It never went to number one for him, but it's number one for me right now in the charts. And so uh, the first three songs off of this went number one, made my 62nd number one song. And so I appreciate that, and it'll be available back there today. The CDs are $15.00. Uh, and all the money, 100%, goes to help us uh, with what we're doing around the world. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. If you uh, really want something good to read, uh, there's a devotional back there called Rhapsodies of Reality. Uh, they print one billion of these each month. Not million, billion. And uh, they're free. Pick up one off the table. Uh, I would recommend that you go back quick because they, they just they get away. We carry as many as we can. Uh, but if you want something good to read, uh, it'll be a real blessing to you. I'll be at the church at Princey's in March. They run 60,000. Did you hear what I said? They have 60,000 in Lagos, Nigeria. They only seat 30,000, and they have to chain the doors and put guards at the doors in between the services to keep people from breaking the doors down to get in the church. It's quite different than America. They're trying to break the doors down to get out of the church. But in, in Nigeria, they're trying to break the doors down to get in the church. They stand in the hot sun for six hours just to get into God's house. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves in America. And uh, so take advantage of that. A lot of stuff, you'll see pictures of the church in there. And uh, just take advantage of that. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to turn to the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter. I want to say while we're turning there, I have some real dear friends here that drove all the way up from Nashville to be in service with us today, Brother Smith and his daughter. When I pastored for a short period of time, about 10 years I pastored, uh, this man was a member of my church. He said I was the only preacher who ever got him in church three times in a week. He was, he was my, one of my bus drivers. We ran buses and picked up three or 400 kids every Sunday. And our church was packed out every Sunday. You had to get there early to get a seat. We only seated about 650. And the balcony and everything was just packed and jammed. And uh, Brother Smith's here today. His wife, uh, today would have been their 62nd wedding anniversary. And she went to heaven this year. And so he came today to celebrate with us and Brother Smith, I appreciate you so very much. I loved his wife dearly. She's a lot sweeter than he is. He's mean as a devil. And he has to come to one of my services every once in a while just to stay saved. Uh, and, uh, and But, boy, he's just a dear, 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 dear man of God and, a, and uh, just a dear friend. And so thank you for coming up. They came up yesterday and spent the night so they could be in service with us this morning. So uh, pray for him. I know this is a tough day for him. 
uh, I'm coming up just in, a, in about 10 days on my wife's fifth year of being in heaven. And uh, I tell you, it's not easy. So uh, uh, pray for them today. Uh, would you uh, mind, I know you've been standing up and down, but I wonder if you'd just mind standing one more time with me for prayer. And then we're going to get right into the word of God. Uh, Father, I come today to ask you that the yoke-destroying, burden-lifting, soul-saving, sick-healing anointing come in this service. Lord, I pray that we will reflect your word. And Lord, that you today would stretch forth your hand that signs, wonders, and miracles may be done in the name of the holy child Jesus for all that you accomplish to us and through us I give you glory in Jesus name amen God bless you now I'd like to preach about 30 minutes if you say amen if you don't say amen it'll be longer so that ought to stir you up in the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter, I'm going to read out of the Amplified Bible. And while you're turning there, I want to tell you a story. There was a man who had a pet store. In this pet store, he had a parrot. And it was a parrot with a bad attitude. And one day, this man and his wife came in, and when they walked through the door, the parrot screamed, that's the ugliest woman I've ever seen. It made the woman mad and made her husband mad, and he went to the pet store owner, and he said, your parrot insulted my wife. So he went and opened the cage door and got the parrot by the neck, started shaking it, and feathers flying everywhere. He said, if you ever insult another customer, I'm going to kill you. put it back in the cage. The couple continued to shop. When they were getting ready to leave, the parrot said to the man, come here, man. He walks over to the cage, and the parrot said, you know. <laughs> so the title of this message today is, you know. There's a lot of things that we know that we need to know. And sometimes some of my preaching insults people because they know what I'm saying to be true, but they don't like what I'm saying. So if I say something that insults you, you know. You know. In Isaiah 55, verse, verse 10 and 11 in the Amplified Bible, it says, for as the rain and snow comes down from heaven and returns not there again, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and sprout, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. How many of you are like me and sometimes rain and snow is inconvenient? Don't look at me like you haven't ever said, will this rain ever stop? Don't look at me when you get up to go to work and it's snowing and you know that people are going to be playing bumper cars that morning. It's inconvenient, but what you have to look at is that the rain and snow is to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So what we have to understand that sometimes inconvenient things is what it takes for God to get what he wants to get to us, to us. Now, it's going to be a long sermon, quiet as you are. I'm telling you right up front, it's going to be a long sermon lest you get stirred up. Because I'm saying some good stuff that you ought to be saying amen to. All right, there you go. God is always trying to get something to us. 
But a lot of times it comes through difficulties that happen in our life. And what I want to talk to you about for just a few moments uh, this morning is on seed time and harvest. God is always trying to get seed to us so that he can get a harvest to us. Do you realize how important seed are? I mean, in the natural as well as the spirit. And the only place that harvest comes before seed time is in the dictionary. On the third day of creation, God created the seed in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. But the two previous days, he created light and he separated the water because it takes light and water in order for seed to bring forth a harvest. On the third day, he created seed. On the third day, he created seed. On the third day, not the fourth day, fifth day, on the third day, he created seed because he had Calvary on his mind. He knew that one day there would be another seed that would fall into the womb of a virgin and bring forth a son, and that son, according to John 19, 41, the Bible said that when Jesus was crucified, the cross was in a garden, and the tomb was in a garden. So Jesus was a seed that came into the woman, was born as the Son of God, died on a cross, entered a tomb as a seed, but came out a Savior. On the third day, on the third day, the Bible said in Genesis 2, 8, after God created seed, he planted a garden. So in order to plant a garden, you have to have seed. So God created seed, then God planted seed, and then God spoke to the ground, and the ground brought forth a harvest. Amen? Now, in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, if you back up to verse 20, Noah has just has just, uh, you know, endured the flood 40 days and nights on a boat with animals, and now the rain is stopped, and he's off the boat, and he built an altar, and he's offering sacrifices on the altar. And as he's offering sacrifices on the altar, God makes a covenant with him that the earth will never be destroyed again by water. And then in verse 22, he says, from the beginning of time to the end of time, there'll be seed time, and there'll be harvest. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8 said, For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Jesus, in speaking to his disciples in parables, he spoke 46, 47 parables. 26 of those parables had to do with sowing and reaping. In Mark chapter 4, he said, If you don't understand the parable of sowing and reaping, you won't understand any other parable in the kingdom. Everything rests on sowing and reaping. We are what we are now by the seeds we sowed yesterday. We'll be what we are tomorrow by the seeds that we sow today. Can somebody say amen? Come on. We are what we are by the seeds that we, every one of us are seeds that was sown. So the Lord said in Isaiah chapter 55, Put verse 11 up there if you would. Watch this. He said, so my word, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. What's he saying? Just as the rain and snow comes down out of heaven and gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater, he said, my word that goes forth is for this purpose, to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. God's trying to get something to you that you can sow so that he can get something to you that you can sow, so he can get something to you that you can sow, so he can get something to you that you can sow, so that he can bring a harvest after harvest after harvest into your life. 
and take you from one level to the next level to the next level. And contrary to what it looks like at this church this morning or contrary to what it looks like in the world, God's still on the throne. The word of God is still true. The devil is still defeated. I'm still victorious. And God is getting ready to do something in the world and the church that we've never seen in the history of the world. And it's about to take place while the church is sitting around asleep. It's time to wake up. It's time to believe the word of God. It's time to sow for what's coming into our lives. Somebody ought to give the Lord a praise offering in the house today. I'm telling you, we're on the verge and threshold of the greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the church that we've ever seen in the history of the world. We're about to see them try to rip the doors off the churches of America to get in where the power of God is falling and miracles are getting ready to take place. If God did it once, God will do it again. If God did it one time, he'll do it bigger and better the next time. Lord's told me to preach this everywhere I go this year. You see, in order to understand the spiritual, you have to understand the natural. In Matthew chapter 6, when Jesus is teaching on the kingdom, he says, now look at these birds. He said, they don't sow and they don't reap, but your heavenly Father cares for them. Isn't that wonderful? But see, here's what happens to people in the church. They say, the birds don't sow, and the birds don't reap, and God takes care of them, so I don't have to sow, and I don't have to reap. God will take care of me. That's not what Jesus was teaching. Do you want to live like a bird? He starts in verse 25. He said, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat. Your body for what you shall wear is life, not more than, than meat and the body more than raiment. But seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things are going to be added unto you. But he's telling us how to get to that place where all these things are added to us. It's through sowing and reaping. The birds can't get to that place. But we can get to that place because we've been given the privilege of sowing and reaping. And God's trying to get seed to us so we can sow the seed and get to that place where all the things are added to us. Pastor Roy believed that. That's the reason this church is built here. And there's no debt on this church. You know how what a marvel that is with the size of congregation that you have that you could build a building like this and have it paid for while churches down the street smaller, not near as nice, are paying a three or four, five, six thousand dollar a month mortgage. This church is paid for because it had one man that believed what I preached and taught what I preached and raised up a group of people that believed what I preached and taught what I preached and through sowing and reaping, this building sprung up, glory to God, for his glory. And it's not built for the ones that are here. It's built for the ones that's coming. And when they come, it'll already be here and it'll already be paid for for the glory of God because somebody bleed in sowing and reaping. You got to understand the natural. I carry these seeds with me, and you've seen me use these on TV. You've seen me use them in church. These are seeds. That's watermelon seed. Right down here in the corner, it tells you how many days after you plant that seed till you get a harvest. 90 days. If you sow one watermelon seed, you're going to get a vine. And on that vine, there's going to be several watermelons. And inside those watermelons is going to be what? More seeds. Isn't that right? I mean, that's in the natural. How many of you believe if I sow this? at the right time, in the right place, then I'll get watermelons. Some of y'all don't believe that. I'm going to have to preach on watermelons for a minute. I said, how many of y'all believe if I sow this at the right time, in the right place, I'm going to get watermelons? And how many of you believe those seeds are going to be in the watermelons? And you believe if I take those seeds out of the watermelon and dry them out, and then next time it's time to sow watermelons, and I sow watermelons, I'm going to have more watermelons. You believe that? That's what Jesus was trying to teach. On the third day of creation, he created 
the seed and then spoke to the seed. And when he spoke to the seed and his word went in the seed, his word declared what the seed was going to be. And I don't care what kind of faith you got. I don't care how much you talk in tongues or fall out in the Holy Ghost. While you're planting watermelons, you ain't going to get corn. You can confess it. You can walk, dance. You can fall out in the spirit. You can do a dance right in the middle of the garden. But if you plant watermelon, you're going to get watermelons. And if you don't plant watermelons, guess what? You ain't going to get no watermelons. I don't care what kind of child of God you are. I don't care how many times you come to church. You can talk in tongues. You can prophesy. But you're not going to get watermelons until you plant watermelons. How many of you believe that with me? Well, why is it in the church that we think we can just come to church and not sow, amen, and not do what God's telling us to do, but God's going to meet every one of our needs, and God's going to bless us, and God's going to get us out of debt, and we're going to have prosperity, and everything's going to be wonderful. See how quiet you got? You were shouting on watermelon, but when we talk talking about us sowing, <laughs> people get real quiet. God's trying to get seed to you, so you can. How many of you uh, uh, have some money you can get your hands on? Wave at me. I want. I can't believe we got that many broke people in this church. I said, "How many of you got a little bit of money you can get your hands on?" Wave up your hand. You know what that tells me? You've had a harvest somewhere. Because you wouldn't have that seed if you had not had a harvest somewhere. People that don't have anything, they had a harvest, but they didn't re sow. Hello, are you still here? I said, the people that don't have anything, they had a harvest, but they ate their seed. When you have money come into your hands, you have to discern three things. Number one, you have to discern, is this to sow or to eat? If what's in your hands is not enough to meet your need, it's seed. You have to sow what you have to create what you need. Well, I sure thought it would be a lot easier to preach this to this church. <laughs> I said, you have to sow what's in your hand to create what's in your need, what's in your in your future, what what you have need of. You gotta sow what you have to create what you need. You know. <laughs> you know. You know. Look at somebody and say, you know. I shouldn't have to be preaching this, but you have to preach this to remind people that you only reap what you sow. If you're always mad, you ever notice, if you're always mad and you never smile, guess what kind of people around you? Mad people. Because you reap what you sow. You, you look at your kids and you'll find out what kind of person you are. <laughs> My kids turned out just like their mother. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but Jesus, in his parables, taught over and over to his disciples on this. You have to discern if the seed is for sowing or eating. Number two, you have to discern the soil that you're sowing into. I I'm going to help you here. Your tithe don't belong to the television preacher. Your tithe belongs to the church where you attend and get your spiritual food. Right here, in case you don't know where your storehouse is, it's right here. Well, God led, no, God didn't lead you. God's not going to lead anybody against his word or away from his word. He, he, if he speaks to you, it's going to line right up with his word. He said, bring the tithe into the storehouse. You have to discern the soil. This is good soil right here. I said, this is good soil right here. This is a good place to sow right here. This is good soil right here. If you're watching uh, by, by media, this is a good place for you to sow. If you don't have a place to sow, right here is a good place to sow. You have to discern the soil. And then the third thing you have to do is discern your own heart. Why are you sowing? 
The motivation for sowing is always love. How many of you, uh, I'll go back to the natural moment. I'm not going to sow cucumbers because I don't like them. Wouldn't it be crazy for me to plow up the garden, sow all cucumbers, and I don't like them? What's that? I'm not going to sow something that I don't like. I'm not going to sow okra. I don't like okra. My mom used to boil it. You ever had boiled okra? My God, that's nasty. I, I'm not going to boil I know you can fry it, but the only memory I have is the boil. So I'm not going to sow it because I don't like it. I've heard people, they come up and get my prayer line all the time. Please pray for me that I get out of debt. Well, you sowed your way in it. You must like it. If you didn't like it, you'd sow your way out of it. You know. You know. Debt is sacrificing your future to satisfy your present. Your instant gratification is going to destroy your future glorification. So you, if you, Jesus taught you got to sow. You can't. Your heart has to be right. You got to sow for the right reason. Jesus. Uh, you know, the Lord spoke to his seed. He said, you're watermelon, you're corn, and you're okra, and, 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 and you're uh, this, and that, and it was. And when we sow, we got to do the same thing. You're to get me out of debt. You're to change my financial destiny. You are to turn this situation around. You're to make sure I get raises and increases on my job. This is what my seed's for. My seed is to get more seed so I can plant more seed so I can plant more seed so I can plant more seed so I can get more seed so I can plant more seed and I can do something for the kingdom of God. Nathan, you don't mind me saying this. If you do, uh, you, you can rebuke me later, but playing up here this morning. He told me this morning that one day both his old cars was tore up. And he turned on the TV and all of a sudden there's preacher on there preaching what I'm preaching this morning. So he told his wife, we're coming out of this. We're not going to have tore up cars. And we're not a good representation for the kingdom of God. We're going to change what we do. Amen. And you know when you change the seed you sow, you change the harvest you reap. I wish I was preaching this to a Pentecostal church. Let me tell you, you take a seed, the moment you put that seed in the dirt, it loses its identity. It's no longer a seed. Because God has conditioned the, the dirt that you put the seed in. There's 17 nutrients in that earth. And, and it's very interesting, uh, the number 17 is a number of deliverance. Israel left Egypt on the 14th night. They crossed the Red Sea on the 17th night. Luke 6.38 said, Given it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Add up 6.38. What's that add up to? Add up 6, 3, and 8. Come on, some of you math folks. What is it? 17? In other words, 6, 3, and 8, 17. That's the number of deliverance. Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. I'll cause man to give to you bush. That's the number of deliverance. 17. If you read Deuteronomy 28, bless coming in, bless going out, bless rising up, bless laying down. Count them, underline them, number them. 17 promises in that covenant. So when a seed goes in the ground, 17 different nutrients start being attracted. Do you know when you put a seed in the dirt, the dirt begins to vibrate? It's a scientific fact because things start moving and the dirt starts vibrating and responding to the seed. When it goes into the dirt, it goes in a seed. When it comes out, it comes out a harvest. 
When we put something in the kingdom, you may put $100 in the kingdom, but when it comes out, it's a hundredfold. It comes out of harvest. Come on. When you put your tithe in God's uh, hand in the church, he said, I'll open the window to heaven. i pour you out the blessing, and there won't be room enough in your life to receive everything I'll do for you. If you just keep tithing, I'll keep blessing. Come on. If you keep sowing, I'll keep giving you a harvest. Every seed has three abilities. Number one, they can die, they can resurrect, and they can multiply. They can die, they can resurrect, and they can multiply. When that seed goes in, here's what happens. In the first 24 to 48 hours when a seed's put in the dirt and water touches that seed, that water softens the outer shell, which is hard, and creates pressure inside that seed. See, this is one thing we don't like about prosperity because when you sow your seed, pressure is created. Hell comes at you from every direction when you plant a seed. Am I right? Am I talking to anybody? Has anybody in this church ever planted a seed and all hell broke loose in your life? That's what happens when a natural seed is put in the earth. Everything comes to that seed. And that seed begins to feel pressure. That water begins to absorb into that seed. All of a sudden, that outer uh, shell burst open. You know what's happening in the world right now? All the pressure we see around us, all the political upheaval, all the killings everywhere you look. You know what's going on? This earth is in, in, in a time of pressure. It's about to give birth. It's about to give birth to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're about to see a harvest in the church. God's about to get souls ready for this last day kingdom. Hallelujah. Just before the trumpet of God sounds. It's all around us. Pressure has been created. About to be a harvest. About to be a harvest. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this is very interesting. I, I saw this under a microscope. Right out of the bottom of that seed. I don't know. I, I think I've got a corn seed in here that's loose. Let me see if I can get it for just a second. This kernel of corn, the moment... That water touches it within 24 to 48 hours. The bottom part of this seed will crack open and a little white root will come out that looks like a hair and it'll start looking for water and it'll attach itself to the dirt. You know what that little white root's call? The radical. The radical. See, givers are radical. It don't make sense for you to give a year's wages, but a woman did in the Bible. And Jesus said this would be a memorial to her. It don't make sense for a Gentile that's not included in the plan of God to give alms and pray for revival and the Holy Ghost hit his house. Giving is radical. Every time you see a seed, and every time God sees a seed, it reminds him of that seed that was on that cross that resurrected from that grave. Did you know this is an annual seed? It has to be planted every year. But there's another seed, and uh, this is not an annual seed. This is a perennial seed. It only has to be planted one time. This seed has the ability, uh, just like a grass seed, it has the ability to burst through rock or concrete and find its way out. Are you still here? Jesus was a perennial seed. They put a stone over that seed. I said they put a stone over that seed, but that seed moved the stone and came out anyway. 
and still producing a harvest to this day. That's why we're here. God had one son. Now God has many sons. God wanted a family, so he sold a son, and God's son gave him a family. I'm, I, I got about 25, 30 pages of notes on this, and I got to page two, and I'm done. I'm not finished, but I'm done. How many of you know there's a difference between finished and done? Uh, this entire year, I've been preaching this message. God told me to preach this message. He said, I'm trying to get a harvest to my church. The last day, move of God is going to require harvest. We've been working in India now for 15 years plus. We've been working in Africa. We've been working in Haiti. Been had a revival. This church helped us last year go to Dominion, the, the uh, not the Dominion, but that's where you go. But Trinidad. I showed her pictures of Trinidad. We had so many souls saved in Trinidad. In the roughest part of Trinidad, we couldn't count them all. They said that nobody would come to that area at night. We had thousands. I showed her pictures. Thousands came. When we go to these countries, they can't financially support what we're doing. But how many of you believe we ought to go anyway? Well, that's a couple of you. I said, how many of you believe we ought to go anyway? Jesus didn't just die for America. Jesus died for the whole world, and the whole world needs the gospel. This year through television, I've preached in 204 countries this year. This year through television and crusade, we've had 2 million 69,420 souls saved this year documented. I'm not talking about guessing how many got saved. I'm talking about how many I know got saved. Praise God. And, and what's happening right now is it's like in India. Uh, I'm going to show you a, about a 30-second video uh, of a church we built there. When my wife passed away five years ago, God told us to build an orphanage, and we built an orphanage called Ruby's House. And, uh, and God told me to buy cows, and I showed, uh, I showed uh, Bishop Porter uh, a, a video this morning of those cows with our missionary, you know, telling her or telling us, thank you for the cows. They give milk to the orphans and all that. And so the, uh, we're building churches there. But what's happened is now the government tells us that in the next 18 to 20 months, they're not going to let any more money come in to India to minister. So what we have to do is we have to do everything we can in the next 18 to 20 months believe in God that, he, that, that he'll change that. But right now, we know we got that window. And, and, and you won't believe this, but I'm going to show you just if, if Nathan will roll this and just cut the lights if you don't mind. And roll this. I want to show you. This is our missionary. And when he says, thank you, Pastor Mark and Stephanie, that's my son and his wife who are associates with our ministry. They pastor in Orlando. This, uh, Jeanette knows them. But uh, watch this. This is our missionary in India where we're sowing seed. they've been working on. One is a new church in the state of Chhattisgarh in North India in the, in the city of Jaglapur in a village remotely outside. It is in a tribal area. It has no other churches have been planted in this particular region and we have a pioneer work there and we just built a place of worship for all the new believers to come to. It is a beautiful place of worship and we did our ribbon cutting and we did an opening prayer so that people could actually use the building. And I pray that you uh, would be able to come in the near future and we could actually do the uh, dedication officially with the ribbon cutting and the plaque. And this is made in honor of Sister Ruby and it'll be called Ruby's House. 
The second project that we're working on is in the same state, in the same area, or a little different village, and we'll be planning another church. And that church is still under construction, and it still has a little bit more to go. In the next few months, it should be finished. And again, we're going to invite you to come, uh, be here in India with us, and to be able to dedicate this in honor of Sister Ruby. We love you. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your support and your partnership in the projects. Thank you so much. God bless you. Come see India soon. When I, got up this morning, when I got up this morning, I needed $3,500 to finish that church. Somebody bought $100 worth of CDs when I walked in, so I got to have $3,400 to finish this church. And I'd like for you to help me. This is good ground. God will bless you for giving. That's why we're here, Sister Porter knows. And, and, and that's just one of the needs. This is letters that I received this week from prisoners. This is one week. Letters from prisoners who've been born again by the television ministry. And they're asking if I could send them some music CDs so that they can sing songs in the chapel services. So if you don't like my music, stop back and buy some and I'll send them to prisoners. And they'll sing my music in the prisons and people will be blessed. You see, everybody can do something. I, I'm not here for me. I don't have to, to preach for offerings. My songwriting uh, has, 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 you know, blessed me to the place where I... I could go home and not have to ever work again in my life if it was just about me. But I believe we're supposed to build churches and win souls. And Did y'all see that first church? Did you understand that it's built in a city where there wasn't none churches? Did you see how full it was? Did you know that other one when it's built, it'll be the same way? It's not like America. There's not a church on every corner. And if I had three people that sold $1,000, we could do this. If I had 35 sold 100 we could do this, or 34 You see, uh, I don't know what you can do, but I'm going to ask you to do something. Is that okay if I ask you to do that? You know. <laughs> I said, you know. I'm going to ask you to help me. Because someone you'll get to heaven one day, and somebody walk up to you and say, because you gave it Sunday morning at Liberty Ministries, I got saved at that church. Come on. How many of you uh, got saved in the church? Wave at me. Aren't you glad somebody built a church? I said, aren't you glad somebody built a church so you could hear the gospel and get saved? So I'm going to ask you this morning, if you would, uh, I do this every time I come here, and Sister Porter gave me the authority to do this, so I'm not doing this in my own authority. I'm going to lay my Bible right here. I'm going to ask you to bring your seat, and I'm going to ask you to lay it right here on this Bible. And after you lay your seat there, I'm going to lay my hand on it and ask God to give you a hundredfold increase. Now, can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? Every time we receive an offering to build churches in India or we receive offerings to buy missionaries, bicycles, whatever, there's something about India that God loves. And every time we do this, I get testimonies from people that says, you know, I gave in that offering, and God blessed me. And I'm thinking about one right now from a man down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. God spoke to him that morning, and this was unusual because he had just had a daughter in the hospital with no insurance, and he had a bill of over $50,000. He didn't know how he was going to pay for it. And that morning, the Lord spoke to him to plant a $1,000 seed. Brother Rick, that was tough for him, but he obeyed. Guess what happened? The hospital wrote him a letter and said, we are going to forgive you and write this $50,000 debt off and had on it paid in full. Why? He planted a seed because he had a need. Listen. I want to show you something. How many of you like corn? Do you like corn? How many of you like corn? All right. 
corn. You like corn? Uh, I'm going to give you some to eat. Would you eat this? Would you eat this corn? <laughs> now, it's not going to taste good. You know why? Because it's meant to be sowed. This is what the Lord showed me. If we keep seed that we're supposed to sow and we use it for something else, it's going to leave a bad taste in your mouth. If you're watching by Internet and you want to be part of this, then you can be part of it. You can go to our website and tell you exactly how to give, jamespainministries.com. I'm going to ask you to help me this morning, if you would. Bow your heads. Lord, I preach the gospel this morning, not to get seed from people, but to get seed to people. Because, Lord, we have to sow what's in our hand before you release what's in your hand. Lord, we have to sow a seed before you release a harvest. Lord, this is good ground. This is a good place to sow. Lord, we have to finish this church before the first of the year. Lord, I believe through the help of the people this morning we can get the job done. And Lord, I just thank you that this church has always been a generous, liberal, loving, giving church. So, Lord, I have no doubt that they'll be the same way today. And Lord, I ask that when we lay our hand on their seed, that you'll give them a quick harvest. Lord, as they purchase tapes this morning, and Lord, as, as we use the money there, I pray, God, for a great harvest in their life. And I thank you in advance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Would you stand? Would you bring your seed here while Nathan plays? And then we're going to pray for you if you have a need in your life before we leave today. Praise God. But right now, let's build a church that's going to reach hundreds for Jesus. It's going to reach hundreds, maybe thousands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your people, the obedience of your people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that the need is met in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somewhere this morning, uh, Sister Porter, they milked a cow that this church helped pay for, and that milk was served to some person who lives at an orphanage, and God takes in account that. Amen. So let's pray over this seed today. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you that your people have heard your voice. They've obeyed your voice, and they've sown accordingly. Now, I ask for a bountiful harvest back into their hands in the name of Jesus and for your glory. Amen, amen, and amen. Remain standing if you need prayer. If you're lost, you need to be saved. If you're sick, God will heal you. If you're oppressed, God will deliver you and set you free. So if you have a need, I'm going to ask you to come right now. Just stand here with us for a moment. I want to pray with you before we leave that God will meet your need. He'll confirm his word with signs following the ministry. Would you come right now if there's a need? If there's a need, come now and we'll pray with you and believe God for you. Come quickly, don't, don't, don't wait, come quickly. Just stand, come on over here in the middle. I want some of you believers to come and stand with us today behind these who are here. We're going to join our faith with their faith. We're going to believe God with them.